good evening to all our attendees from india good afternoon to our lovely attendees from france from germany from italy the middle east and all the other parts of the globe namaste warm greetings from team dentist channel dot online my name is ruben and it's my pleasure to moderate this session we hope you all are ready to listen to our esteemed speaker dr lawrence sirs if you all all are ready excited geared up then i want all of you all to type yes excited in the chat box i want each and every one of you to write yes excited thank you very much with all those power packed yeses i think we are good to start so on behalf of team dentist channel dot online i welcome our esteemed speaker dr lawrence sirs dr lawrence is an expert oral implantologist he is the board director of the computer aided implantology academy france and is also the vice president of the computer aided implantology academy he is an active member of the european society of cosmetic dentistry as well as the digital dentistry society he is also a member of the international congress of oral implantology he is the president of the society avenir implantology partners i thank dr sanjay asnani the director of the computer aided implantology academy india for co organizing today's webinar over to dr lauren for the live webinar on the topic the digital workflow supporting the biology in immediate loading implant treatment thank you very much for joining us dr lauren and now request you to kindly continue with the webinar okay uh, so first of all uh, thanks to everybody to join this uh, this session it's a pleasure and honor for me to be with you today uh, i would like to begin my session to congratulate a lot the caregivers to help the sick pe sick people during this terrific pandemic and i hope for all of you 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 feel well and your family this is the first point i would like to say before I introduce my topic so to to introduce it I, the first one i want to say to you is that the modern day world is digital so you have 3 billion internet users 500,000 pc tablets sold a day 100,000 google connection per seconds and this this are the statistics for 2013 so be certain we are all connected and the digital technology is used in numerous fields like you see nanotechnology design tools are manufacturing genetic etc etc so the question is how is it used in dentistry so we can define several fields i mean during all the treatment you have at the beginning on the 3d imagery what we call the digital workshop for for the the, the the use of the computer for the workshop the guided surgery during the surgery cat cam process and 3d printing for the prosthesis making intraoral scanner now and and we can see that there is a new technology for to uh, register the occlusion now but uh, this uh, for now just innovative technology and it, all this uh, technology is what we call the digital uh, dentistry and uh, digital dent dentistry uh, so is fantastic for us because we we get in touch with the future with this so let me present uh, a cases i did 7 years ago so it's not now it's 7 years ago so uh, there is um, there is a sober sober uh, is a businessman always a very busy man always in a hurry and um, he proposed a deal with me told to me doctor sir we can do what you want so uh, i want please um, fix dentition on the upper jaw and lower jaw but i have no time for you please try to do your best for to do it uh, quickly so i throw it over with the dental technician 
And uh, the challenge was to do a full arching plant rehabilitation on the upper and lower jaw with screwed processes in immediate loading and in one session. So we came up with a solution thanks to the digital technology and uh, we deal with him this solution. So let me explain. First of all, I did the planning on the upper jaw. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it was a, a mucosa support guided surgery. And then lower jaw, uh, I did a, a bone support uh, guided surgery. So I planned all my implants, eight implants in the, on, the low, on the upper jaw and six implants in the lower jaw. Then after the planning, I take the SL files and before the surgery, I order for a guide and the prosthesis done before the surgery. This is thanks to the STL files using the CAT CAM process. So about the surgical protocol on the maxillary and mandibular at the same time. First of all, it's a guide placement for the upper jaw and uh, extraction from the lower jaw, put the guide extraction all the drilling steps, and then it's uh, remove the guide and we have this situation. In uh, one session, I put in impl eight implants in the upper jaw and six implants with extraction implantation on the lower jaw. And then it's a prosthetic protocol so that then the process is, uh, was done before the, the surgery. So now I can uh, bond the, the processes to the prosthetic abutment. You know, so the result with uh, bonding, and I check for the occlusion now, all is okay. And it's done in two hours, so seven years ago, it's very nice for the patient to do it in two hours of per draw and lower draw thanks to the digital process. So the digital technology, six months later, the workflow must go on. So it's the final steps and uh, we introduce now for the definitive processes, the CAD CAM, so computer aid design, uh, to design the framework in the on the processes and take care of the emergence profile, take care of the <coughs> homotesty, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the framework in zirconium by CATCAM manufacturing. And at the end, we have the dental lab fashion. So for now, for the aesthetic, uh, it's important to, to work with a very, an artistic dental technician. So this is the result, very nice. At the end, we have a very nice processes with a perfect framework, contact with the zirconia gengiva, perfect emergence profile, biomimetism and very accuracy around 20 microns. So thanks to the dental technician, the dental lab in hall, the dental lab in the wall, uh, they are passionate guys and, very, and they help us for, for to do the, the good job. So this is uh, in situation at the hand, thanks to the digital technology, the smile of the passion. So, and it's very amazing. It was amazing for me. And seven years uh, after, the, the, this rehabilitation after control issues uh, works uh, yet. So it's very fantastic. So, uh, but I want to, to, to say to you that it's not always the, the, the same story because sometimes we have some failure. You know, failure at short time, short time and failures on a long time. So uh, the question is that we are working on uh, we work on human beings. So that means that we are working on the living elements, such as uh, liquids, vessels, artery, bone. And more than that, we are working on, on cells. I say osteoblast, okay, osteocyte, maybe heart hormone, vitamin, etc., etc. So the question is what happened when we introduce the technology into, into the body. Okay, we create a damage, a trauma, but the body can repair itself. We know that, but we know also that now the, the osteointegration is very complex and uh, before any implantation, we have to check different points. I mean, 
LDL cholesterol rates, osteoporosis, diabetes, vitamin D rates, different pathology and the lifestyle of the patient. Because in some cases, some patients cannot be implanted and no technology, no digital approach can change this. This is the first important point I would like to share with you to introduce my topics. And the second point is that the, the um, digital technology mustn't uh, be considered to, to, to do the show. It's not here uh, to promote yourself, to promote uh, your Facebook, uh, to do the selfie. It's not here to obtain like or something like this. The digital technology is just here for a single and unique reason, single and unique points, is to help and promote the biology, the aesthetic, and the function. And this is very important, okay? So the digital is here to support the biology. This is the unique reason of the, the, the use of the digital. Be, be conscious of this. So. At the end, we have two technologies very important for the immediate loading. So the guiding system and the CAD CAD system. And at the end, we can use these two technologies to, to do a perfect immediate loading concept for long-term results. So first of all, how the guiding system promotes the biological response. So it's doing all the different steps of uh, the, the treatment. So I mean, during the 3D imagery, during the planning, during the surgery, and during the making processes. First of all, what about the 3D imagery? So let me present you an article on BMC Oral Health, uh, wrote by Benjamin Salmon. If you can be careful, this um, write the, the, the author, you can and read these articles, you can find all the different points of the recommendation and um, rules of a perfect uh, process to, to obtain a perfect images in 3D. So I can show you different also articles from a different author. You can uh, write it and you can read it to explain the different points. So I just want to, to go on the two or three uh, specific points about the volume acquisition. Um, first of all, it's uh, CBCT or CT scan. So we use the DICOM files. And what's the best frame for uh, do immediate loading for full or treatment? So you can see the different volume uh, used. So I think that the best is the second one. So you have to take under the haze and to the basal uh, in the zone because uh, on the right, on the left, maybe it's too big and for the patient is too much radiation. And the right side uh, is too small for to have all the elements to do a perfect planning and uh, to, to do a perfect uh, processes with FTL files on the computer. So take care to have a full dental house without interference and the perfect visibility of the basilar hedge or the sinus floor. So your, your frame uh, must be on uh, the basilar edge and the sinus floor to obtain all the details of your treatment. So some, uh, some points important. So about the patient positioning. So ask to your company to explain you the correct patient positioning according to your, your CBCT. So in this case, you know, things about uh, cotton rolls, important to avoid the artifact. Be careful also to the motion artifact if the patient moves, take care of this. Uh, take care also about the metal sketcher. So the artifact due to the, to the metal. And um, also be careful to the beam hardening uh, effect. I mean, the dark streaks between two high density objects. So, uh, with serenity bright strike. So uh, to have the good value of your integration. And then if you want to, to have a, a better visualization of your, of, your, of your location, implant location, it's important sometimes to have a perfect visualization of the mucosa. So if you want to, to have this simply, to have the, the good uh, visualization of the mucosa, thanks to put uh, cotton rolls uh, under the lips, 
uh, in the vestibular. And like this, you can have a, a, a black area to, to define this, uh, this mucosa. These different points to help you. So what about the digital planning? The digital planning is the technology that allows us to do a 3D planning positioning according to the rules and the biological principle of the earth integration. And this is the most important with the planning to, to put correctly your implant according to the rules and the biological principles of the host integration. First of all, on your slide, you have the bone volume, gingival thickness, and the prosthetic space. You can see this on your, on your computer. So uh, each slide show you this first point. And then you have to place correctly your implant. But what is the rules and biological principle of the earth regression? Everybody knows this. You learn this uh, in the university. This is done by different author, Grunder, Spray, Tarno. Okay, you have on the buccal uh, bone and the implant more than two millimeters. Between implant and teeth, two millimeters. Okay, between two implants is three millimeters. And also according to the, um, to the, the, switch, uh, the switch platform uh, approach, you can plan your implant one millimeter under the bone level. And uh, in the respect also of the anatomic uh, risk area uh, to, to avoid the dental nerves of the sinus, it's very important to, to put your implant out of this area. So the digital planning allows you to put perfectly your implant according all these points all these rules and biological, biological principle. So the question is, how does the digital promote the biology during the planning? So by the optimization of the implant placement, what that means, that means that is to avoid this situation. You know, on the left, um, patient can make with this. So the, I think that the dental, the surgeon, okay, open the flap, and put an implant where he saw the bone. But in fact, when you do the implantology, you think about the bone, but you think also about the prosthesis. On the second picture, you see the, the, the screw is little bit in palatal. Maybe you can think that, oh, it's okay for the patient. But you know, if it's you, you have this in your mouth, like uh, you know, so, um, balls in in uh, in the palate, so it's no good, no fine for the pronunciation. Every day your tongue touch this. So maybe if you use the planning before the surgery with a guide, you can do your best to obtain different situation of your implant. You know, to have the implant perfectly, the implant tissue perfectly in the center of the cingulum. The same to avoid the placement of your implant tissue between two teeth because for to clean the after on the on the process this is not so easy look at the first picture you can see that there is not enough bone on the buccal so you know the rule is two millimeters so if you check with your planning maybe you can use a, a thicker implant Seek a diameter of your implant. Maybe you can move it and to obtain, or maybe you can seek, I have not enough bone in this situation. During the surgery, I graft with allogenic bone, maybe autogenous bone, I don't know, xenograft. Because at the end, short time result, you have this on the, on the fourth slide, so it's like a fourth picture. You lost the bone, you create a pre-implant thesis. And look at the last one. This is a patient called my face told me, I, I, a dentist surgeon uh, put me uh, an implant uh, with the flapless technique, you know? And now I think that the implant move. So I take a CBCT and look, the implant with the flapless is outset the bone volume. So for sure, he move. So uh, it's very important to do a correct planning. And now with the digital technology, we can use it uh, simply easily. So at the end, what we need, we need to have the implant perfectly placed uh, with on, on the bone part in accordance with the biology and in the, the, in the prosthetic part in accordance with the aesthetic function and function. 
So that means that take care that your implant is perfectly encouraged in the bone in respect of the different uh, menstruation about the rules and the uh, biological uh, principle of the stomach migration may take care also that the issue of your processes of your implant uh, allows uh, very nice processes in the center of HD. So maybe this take time and the learning curve it's a little bit um, not so hard, but take time to do this at the beginning. So sometimes the things are not so easy because when you want to do uh, immediate loading and uh, in cases where the bone volume and the processes volume are offset, you know, uh, you have to respect extraction implantation and uh, rules and immediate loading uh, rules. So in this case, first of all, is to respect the rules of extraction implantation. So for this, you have to plan your implant according to the rules. What's it mean? Achromatic extraction. Don't you? Have, you have to. So you have to look the the um, buccal bone. If it's too very thin, you can do the extraction uh, achromatically or not. You have to to think about this. To, and then after you have to clean the, your your bone alveolar. Put your implant in the palatal axis. Everybody knows this in the cases of extraction implantation. Maybe drilling three or four millimeters over the apex to obtain a perfect primary implant stabilization. And after you can think, maybe I can graft with xenograft, allograft, or maybe autogenous, I don't know. Or maybe I can use collagenic uh, membrane. Or I can uh, use the roots membrane techniques, so socket shields techniques. And what about connective tissue graft? So my implant is perfectly things planned on, on this case. But if you look the the process is, is, is not in accordance with the immediate loading because immediate loading, we have to use the screen retain processes concept for full arch. You can use the cemented processes in cases of immediate loading for full arch. Or in this case, if you plan like this, your uh, processes axis is uh, investible. So maybe you can uh, fold the, the, the whole in vestibular with composite. Maybe, maybe you can check if it's better to use maybe angulated abutment. So you can plan on your planning, thanks to the library, different angulated abutment in high and in angulation. So in this case, if you are, uh, you can see, I uh, try 29 degrees and 70 degrees. 17 degrees. So what's the best? If you look at 29 degrees, maybe you create a uh, sick uh, here on the palatal and maybe it's the measure for, for, the, for the tongue and for the phonation. So uh, in this case, I prefer to use 17 degrees abutment to, to be sure that my, my process axis is correctly defined in center of the NCZ. So you can see on the right, the perfect planning. Extraction of the teeth, you can see the gap between the implant and the buccal bone. You can see the perfect <coughs> anchorage three or four millimeters over the apex. You can see the perfect assistance to obtain the perfect increase of your implant. But now I can also plan angulated abutment to have a perfect <coughs> uh, axis of my prosthesis according to the aesthetic, phonation, function, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So look at this case. Uh, this patient wants uh, full arch treatment and she wants I clothe the diastema as you have noticed in the posterior zone. So first of all, on each implant, I plan to obtain perfect anchorage implant for prim. Doesn't matter about the prosthetic axis. Check about the perfect implant placement to obtain a perfect uh, anchorage. And then you can correct with the angulated abutment to obtain a perfect prosthetic axis for your um, for your prosthesis. So you can see on the computer, this is air to gate computer, uh, very nice computer, very nice software. <coughs> you can rotate and rotate your abutment, angulated abutment to have a perfect uh, axis of your prosthesis. And you can choose different size, size different mensuration, and take time to do this. Uh, and then if I 
this is a guide. The guide is for the implant axis. You can see on your right the surgery with different inclinations, put the implant. And then this is the angulated abutment selected. And at the end, this is the prosthesis. Okay, you have the, the X-ray after two years. Look at close to the sinus. I am really close to the to the sinus perfectly. Don't in the sinus. I don't mean the sinus, but just close to the sinus with different angulated implant. But thanks to the angulated abutment plan, my prosthesis in my prosthesis all the the uh, prosthetic issue are in the center of each teeth. Not between two teeth, not too lingual, not too palatal, not too vestibular, but perfectly in the center of each teeth. And this is a possible thanks to the digital way. So the question is for immediate loading. This is very important. Could the digital planning give us information on the bone density? Up to now, we can use different degree of gray to, to uh, say, oh, we are in D1, D2, D3, or D4. You know, if you are white, you think it's D1. If you are black, you think it's, it's D4. The problem is between different CBCT, the adjustment of the exposure brightness or different points uh, is not the same. You can see on the, on the left of my uh, slide, uh, maybe it's on the same picture. Uh, you can see here on D2, D4, D1, it depends on the adjustment of the brightness. So be careful of this, and uh, you have to perfectly adjust your CBCT. The reason why um, the, best, uh, the best images you have is the scanner, because the scanner gives you the native, uh, the native images of the bone. So if you can have images for, for your for your treatment, digital planning. If you can use a scanner, maybe you have it better. But it's not you can do this each time because a scanner you have to go to hospital, etc. You can use the CBCT in, in office, and but you know that the best image will, will be with the scanner. The other point is that if you use the CBCT you can have 496 level of gray on the native uh, slide of CBCT. And then all this slide, all this uh, level of gray go into your computer. And on your computer, you have 256 level of gray. Okay, the problem is that the human height can detect just 16 to uh, 32 level of gray. So the reason why is that some software, in this case, you have Simplan software, <coughs> want to propose to a colorization of different degree of gray to have a, a better option. And in this case, we can see if for the colorization, you can run each implant, they can define, it's not very accuracy, but it's uh, enough to, de to define approximately the, um, the, in the Unsfield uh, unity. And then around your implant, if you are around D4, D1, you can see on your left side, uh, the implant is, the bone is on D4, D4, D3. D3. And then on the right side, you can see D1 and D2. So this is give, this is give you uh, information for the biology and for the immediate, uh, immediate loading. Uh, process. Okay, important for the primary st stability to know your bone density. And if you are in D1, you have to know also this density because you have no stress on the bone when you do the, the drilling. So you have another uh, software who propose this approach a little bit differently. It's uh, Air2Gate developed by uh, Dr. Quambom Park. And uh, he proposed about all these different level of gray to regroup them in four um, colors, you know, different colors to define not the one, the two, the three, but hard bone, medium or soft bone. This is what we mean the dental haze. So on the, on, on the coronal view, you can see 
your implant on the right side with the different color of the bone. And you know if your implant is in a, a hard bone, soft bone, or medial bone. But for the biology, this is important for one point because this is important because we have to check between the drilling step, the bone density, and the implant design. This is specifically for each implant design. What's the diameter of the drill according to the to the bone density? What I want to say is, it's uh, we have to manage between drilling, biology, and implant design. If I look about any vision implant, the implant what I use, okay, this implant you have the reference of the implant, but this don't want to say that your implants maybe it's five millimeters diameter, so five point five. In this case. We have all the mensuration of the drill. We know, thanks to the software, the bone density, and we know also all the mensuration of the implant. And we have to do a, a mix of all of this, okay, to put the perfect, to define the perfect drilling step according to the bone, according to the implant design, to create what we call the no bone stress concept for your surgery, to don't, to don't lose the implant. So what that means, that means if you are maybe in D2 on your left, you do a normal drill, okay? That means if you put in plant 4.5, you drill at 4.3, it's enough. If you want to, your implant location is a, uh, in the posterior on the on the upper jaw, maybe you know that the bone is the bad quality, D4, D3, D4. D4, D4. So in this case, you you maybe you want to under under drill. So I mean, for this implant 5.5, I drill at 3.8. So I under drill a lot to have perfect um, uh, anchorage and primary stability of my implant. And in the same physium, uh, same physio, uh, area, sometimes the bone is very D1, okay? No cells, just uh, calcium, just mineralization. So we want uh, vascularization. And for this, we must over drill to create a gap between the core of the implant and the, the, the drill. So in this case, I over drill. I mean, for implant 3.5, I did a, a drill of about 3.8, okay? And between each case, you have to manage around with the, the, the drilling step, the bone quality, bone density you know with, the, with the, um, the software and also the implant design you have. But this is for all different, uh, this is the case is different for, for the different company of implant. What I explained is with the annual implant. So if you want to do this, check with your, your implants use, uh, what's the best for you, okay? About the drill according to the implant design, according to the, to the wood density. And then the, the, um, on each uh, implant location, if you want, the air to gate system can give you uh, this information. I mean, a guideline between the, what I said before, the implant design, the, the bone density, and uh, the drilling step, according to obtain a perfect initial implant stability. So they give you, according each implant location, the drilling steps, you know, if you are in D2, D1, if you are in D4, I propose implant diameters four, length uh, 13. So they told me, on the guideline produced by the algorithm of the, of the software uh, to stop my drill around 4.5, you know, the 3.5, excuse me, 2.8 and maybe 3. Point, but not more than, don't use 3.8, you can see this. So uh, you are D4, define the bone to D4, and then they propose, according to the implant design, the initial drill, second drill, and then, you know, you have the stop a drill, 2.8, and then you stop to obtain a perfect initial implant stability. I mean, after you can change yourself, but what's proposed the, the, the software to obtain a perfect implant, um, implant stability. So now what's about the guided surgery? So I think um, after the, the digital planning, you have to do the surgery. So I think everybody knows this. It's an opportunity to, to do a, a guide, um, to transfer all the virtual uh, data from the planning in uh, clinical, 
in, in the in the clinical that are into the surgery thanks to this uh, to this guy. So at the end, the 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 virtual uh, data is uh, the same than in mouse. So how does the digital promote the biology during the during the guided surgery? This is very important by the respect of a strict and clearly defined surgical protocol. Okay, so what that means? That means first of all, you have to have a perfect guide placement. So if you use for one teeth, be careful to have a perfect uh, positioning of your guide on your teeth. So take a perfect impression or maybe a perfect um, internal scan of your of your dentition for your dental uh, for the dental lab to obtain the perfect stability of your guide. If you use for full arch, maybe to have a, uh, equal uh, pressure of your guide on the mucosa, maybe you can use a silicone key uh, before screw your implant. The second point is to fix it. The, the guide must, mustn't move, it's very important. So use the, the silicone key and use the, the, um, the, the fixation with screw or pins, okay? And uh, sometimes it's good to open the, um, the guide uh, around this to, to see if you have a perfect adjustment, perfect uh, uh, adjustment before, between the implant and uh, the teeth and the, and the guide. And you can see on, on, the, on, the, on the left. So second point is to have a guided drilling steps from the contact bone. What does that mean? That means that when you introduce the drill into the tubes, you must have the contact bone uh, when your drill is guided, okay? And this all along the different drilling steps, because if not, if you use too long a longer drill and the tubes is not the drill is not guided, you can do a mistake. Okay, this is very important. Be careful of your drilling step. When you introduce the drill, the drill must be guided at the before you 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 do the drilling. Okay, for this you have to have you you must have different uh, mensuration of drills. Okay, different uh, eye. Uh, it's very important. So third point is to have your implant guided all along the insertion. So for me, I prefer to begin with N and finish with a key to be sure uh, of the perfect implant position and to have a perfect also indexation system. Because it will, if you use um, angulated abutment or exa abutment in immediate loading, you you have to know you have to know the perfect to transfer the perfect uh, hexagonal position in your virtual data in mouse. And for this, you have to use indexation system to know the, per to know the perfect position in 3D of your, your, um, your implant in, in, in a clinical case. You know, so for this, all the system you use must have an indexation system. I know that some company didn't propose didn't propose this. So this is very important to transfer correctly the implant position in screen. And lastly, it's important to, to rinse between each steps uh, your, your drill to remove and all the, the taste of the cells, del cells, et cetera. So think about this. So the question is, is it safe? First of all, I want to present you a study done by my, a friend of mine, is um, Dr. Jack Vermelen. Uh, he proposed uh, to do by experiment uh, surgeon. Uh, I mean, surgeon who use maybe uh, more than 200 implants by years and uh, more than 10, uh, 10 years of experiences. And so he proposed to do um, to have a, um, a model, plastic model of an indentation, and give us uh, a participate to this uh, to this study. So it's edited on Joma. You can take the references. So it gives us um, a model with an indentation in plastic, and it, it show us uh, a planning on a computer. It us, please do it freehand and do it with a guide I propose to you.
So all guys experimented. They, they look at the, uh, at, the, um, at the computer, try to do the best to be exactly freehand, like on the, on the, on the planning, and then use with, with a guide. What's the result? So we can see that freehand, we have 2.5 times more uh, deviation in uh, angulation uh, than uh, with a guide. And in lateral corona with freehand, we have three times more angulation that uh, we, we've guide. So be sure that whatever was your skilling, uh, clinical skill, for sure, but you cannot be better than a guide. It's uh, impossible. Uh, I know that sometimes you want to do uh, himself, I think you don't need some to be perfect, but with a guide always is always perfect, for sure. So second point, if you look at different study with the, the use of computer and uh, the guided system, I mean, you did the planning and then you put uh, the, your implant with a guide and we take, we do a scan and we superimpose the planning with a, with a scanner with the implant. And uh, with different study, we can consider that we have a, deviation between uh, in average between 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 millimeter. So be sure the system is safe, secure, and accurate. The la last point I want to share with you is it's, uh, that we have different techniques about uh, to, to guide the drill. First of all, is the, the system developed by air to gate. So you have one guide, tubes, one drill. Most of the system propose the gate in sleep. Okay, so you use a sleeve to put your drill to reduce, etc. And the other last system is double external guiding. So, uh, what's the best one? I don't know exactly. What I can say is that if you use a, a piece like a sleeve, uh, you increase your tolerance because you need to have a tolerance. tolerance between the tubes and the sleeves to introduce the sleeve in the tubes. And then you have to add another tolerance, I mean, between the sleeve and the drill. So you have to add two tolerance and at the end, maybe it's not so accuracy according if you look to the first cases, you know, just the tubes and the drill. So to be more precise, to more accuracy, maybe you can use the first system. I think, you have, I have no studio about this, but what I think about this, I don't know about the twin guide system. About I think it's very precise, but I have no, you, you know, I am not useful with this. But you have to know this free principle uh, technology to use the, to, to use the guide and the drill. So what about now? For the processes, the CAT CAM concept. So, how does the digital promote the biology during the processes making? So, by the use of CAT CAM concept according to the biological principle. So, what does that mean? That means that thanks to the CAT CAT concept, you can have a T bars and a manufactured connection. Okay, you can have a customized abutment. And you can use biocompatibility materials. So what about customized abutment? You can see in scientific literature, different authors explain us what's the, the best for the biology. So the, if I can tell you three important points, first of all, first of all, um, also you, you, you want to do, uh, you have to do emergence profile concave. Don't do convex for a shape. Use the concave shape. All the author uh, is in accordance to say this. Second point, be careful when using the CAT CAM during the design and manufacturing to don't compress the soft tissue. More you, you, you compress the, the soft tissue and after at, at least at the end, you, maybe you can have problem uh, for short or, or medium term of your aesthetic result. And lastly, if you have two components two component for the processes, I mean, uh, prosthetic abutment with the crown, you, you have to, to put your, your limitation of uh, 
your limitation of your abutment on the juxta gengivali, not uh, above, not supra gengivali, but juxta gengivali. If you are up the gengival, uh, you can create a problem with the aesthetic. If you are so sub gengival, maybe you can create, a, you have to cement it, and with cement it can create a periodontosis. But the best way for me, I think you can do it with the, with the digital planning. The best way for the biological response is uh, to use the screw roots and concept. That means no cement, one teeth, one screw. So for this, you can have, they are, can plan on your computer perfectly your uh, prosthetic axis in the center of the singular of the teeth. And then you can do it one uh, with the screw retained concept. Okay. What well, are yeah, at the end? So you have accuracy, hermeticis, hardness, stability, no bacteria, no fracture, no unscrewing, and a perfect soft tissue protect. So we can use titanium, zirconium, or pig. And this is what we want for uh, our uh, processes uh, to have long term results because. This is the only one way to, to have a perfect respect and protect of the biological pace and to prevent any pre implant disease. So this is a good way, thanks to the digital and the CAT CAM process, to obtain the, the better shape and connection for, for, your, for your processes. So, so for the immediate loading, you can do it also. So the question is, how does the digital approach support the biology in immediate loading? So by the optimization of the biological response during all along the digital workflow, what that means at the beginning, during the planning, take care to place correctly your implant to have a perfect accordance, uh, a perfect anchorage of your implant according to the biological, um, the biological rules principle of sustained integration. And then be careful also of the prosthetical axis. Be careful also of the bone density. If you can detect if you are D1, D2, maybe you can move your implant a little bit. And then you can order for a surgery guide, you can order for a teeth before the surgery, and then it's before the surgery, and then is the, pro the surgical protocol. Take time to do it step by step, respect all the steps, place your guide be sure it's perfectly placed and fixed and do your, your all the drilling steps, put the teeth, put the implant and then you can screw the teeth in the same session. Okay, and then you have the X-ray control. So let me present now some, um, some clinical uh, cases. First of all, it's uh, Laurence, 42 years, smoker. And you have problem on in uh, incisive with, uh, you know, a problem of a cyst and uh, I think it is broken. So I have to extract it. And about the problem is one this uh, aesthetic uh, in, in, in a one session with the surgery. So for this, I propose him uh, the, the digital technology to do the teeth before the surgery and to, to have the teeth just after the, during the surgery. So initial steps is to do a perfect CBCT. In this case, with Ertugate, Ertugate we, we use um, the plaster models and uh, silicon key. This is very important to, to match after on the software, the STL files. So we take an, um, a scanner of the, the plaster models with the silicon key, and then we can match with uh, the DICOM files because the patient uh, used the, the silicon key during the, um, during the CBCT. Then it's time for planning. So you can see here, I have the wound density, I have D2, I check the implant, perfect placement, perfect prosthetic uh, placement. This is for the 3D planning. And then it's time to order. So I order the guide and the this before the surgery. So. This is a surgery guide. And then it's time for CAT CAM process for the temporary crown. This is the 3D modeling of the temporary crown. And this is the manufacturing of the temporary crown. We use, we use the PMMI uh, with a perfect uh, manufacturer connection and is screw recent processes concept. 
For the surgery steps, is a protocol, a traumatic extraction, be careful. Then you scale the cyst, you put the guide, you do all the drilling steps slowly, be careful of perfect in, uh, guide placement. And then you put the implant, be careful of the indexation to, uh, to uh, obtain the perfect 3D positioning of your implant according to the planning. And then you check for the insertion torque, you take with your ISQ to be sure perfect initial implant stability of your implant. So in this case, according to the study of uh, the team of Korea, if you have ISQ more than 70, 75 and, and uh, insertion torque equal to 45, you can do the immediate loading. That means that your implant is a perfect initial implant stability. So this time to, to put the, the, the crown, but before, even you, you, even if you, you use uh, the, the digital approach, you can also do the art and soft tissue management during the surgery. Okay, there's no problem for this. Look at it, put the implant. And then I did a, a connective graft here to, to have a better gingiva. And also the gap between the, the, this, the implant, sorry, and, and the buccal bone, I put allogenic graft. And now I put the temporary crown. You can see with the X-ray control of this patient. Okay, the patient won the, the diastema in this case. So it's the reason why I didn't do the contact between the two the two teeth. It's a desire from the from the wish from the patient. So this is the temporary crown. And then four months later, with the cat cam show must go on. So look at the gingiva, and now at this at the hip at the here, I don't use an uh, intraoral scan because it's very important for me. I did it uh, maybe four or five years ago. So I'm uh, not so useful with intraoral scan. And uh, at this time, I prefer to use indirect impression protocol. So I did anatomical pickup uh, for the impression. I think you know this. So it's the best way, I think, to obtain a perfect uh, Registration without compression for your abutment and your emergence profile shape. So after you have the scanning of this area, and then is um, CAD CAM process. I mean modeling of your emergence profile. You have to check with your dental technician the perfect compression or not, as you want. Uh, and then it's time for the manufacturing. I think everybody knows this. And uh, this is done with uh, this machine. Okay. And this is the dental fashion at the end in ceramic. And then at the end, final step, you know, I put at this and you can see we have no compression. The gingiva don't wetting, wetting. Okay, we have no compression. Just screw, put at this and screw. And now, you can see the perfect integration of the teeth. It is the hand, the result, and the very happy passion. So let me present now uh, more complex cases. So this is uh, Annie. Annie is uh, 57 years, no smoker, no pathology. So perfect uh, cholesterol, no diabetes, etc. I check all before any, any surgery. Uh, what's the problem with Annie? Annie, since uh, maybe 30 years is like this. We use uh, over the on the upper jaw and the lower jaw. If I look to the first X-ray, look, we have no bone. No bone in uh, second. If I did the first planning, all my implant plan uh, are offset. Okay, so what's the way in this case? Maybe you can use a zygomatic implant or disc implant or, okay. Uh, it's another, this is another um, reflection about uh, thinking about the treatment. For me, I try to always to go into the biology. And the best way for the biology, I think, is to do uh, a graft bone, to obtain the perfect anatomy, at, like at the beginning. So for this, I sent my patient for a very good surgeon in Paris to do it, and he do a vertical and horizontal bone augmentation. And what spent after six months? 
after six months, look, I have enough wound to do correctly my, my um, implantation. First of all, I have to do the initial step to do the aesthetic setup. I check with the patient, the phonation, the function, occlusion, with all these uh, points with the aesthetic setup. And with this, the patient can do the, um, the, the CBCT now because we have the information about the perfect prosthesis and uh, uh, regardless to the, um, regarding to the bone. So with the planning, we have all this uh, data. You see for each implant, we can see the perfect uh, prosthesis uh, uh, issue. Then you can see with a wood density that we are between D2, D3, D2. So you can do immediate loading in these cases. We have the guideline for each, patient, or each implant location. We know exactly what is the drilling step we have to use for each implant according to the wood density, thanks to the digital, to be in a, to have a perfect initial implant stability and to be in accordance with the no wound stress concept. So now it's a 3D planning. So when you do the 3D planning, you have to check different points, implant dimension, implant position, implant axis, the prosthetic axis, axis, and uh, the use of uh, angulated or straight abutment, the height of abutment, and uh, pin and crease axis and pin and crease position. It takes time, but you have to check all these points to have all your implant perfectly in the center of ECs according to the perfect and crease boon of your implant and the prosthetic axis. So then you can order the guy after this. So if you, when you order, what you have? You have the guide and the prosthesis before the surgery. That means the guide and the prosthesis like this. This is done by CAD CAM process with the diagram data. Then the rest of the, the perfect aesthetic setup. So surgical protocol, first of, first of all, perfect guide positioning. I explained to you before, use the silicone key to have equal pressure of your guide and then you can fix it with screw to be sure it don't move. And then you can do all the drilling steps and respect each steps, okay? According to the guideline you have with the air to gate in these cases and perfect in the indexation implant. And then you can see on the video, all the, the steps you see on the, on the here, on the, on the left, the first drill is in contact before I move the motor, I, I, I do it, okay? Now it's a prosthetic protocol. So I remove the guide. I put the different gingival uh, abutment placement, and then it's time for prosthetic abutment and to bone uh, the, um, the, the prosthesis. So for this, I use a silicone key to obtain the perfect occlusion uh, during the, the bonding. So this is the X-ray control to see the perfect implant positioning. And then this is one month for her up with a perfect gingiva and perfect prosthesis. And um, this is three months later when I remove the, the prosthesis. And then I did the, the, the last time, okay, the final step with the ceramic bridge. Full off, you can see here, you have the planning at the beginning of the, of the cases. And then is the final processes on the, la on the right. And if I match the two images, you can define at the beginning what it will be at the end. This is very important and this is done thanks to the digital pr uh, process. So this is uh, the X-ray uh, with the definitive uh, processes. Very nice result. And uh, what's, we do it for, for this, for a perfect, uh, the smile of the patient, happy patient. And this is for us uh, what we, we have at the end. Very nice. So last question, thanks to the digital, is what is the way to manage the occlusion correctly with digital according to the biology, aesthetics, and function? Because you saw in this case, I put the, I, I uh, bond the processes and I put a silicon key. Okay, it's work, but it's not so precise. It take time and sometimes maybe you can be wrong with, this, the, with the positioning of the correct occlusion. So what's the way to obtain a perfect occlusion? 
So I know now there is a different software developed to obtain the perfect occlusion. I mean, in the Hexocad or Mojo, it's very nice, very nice technology. And I think at the end, we can find a, a very good way. But I, let me show you here uh, a way, a easy way to, to avoid all this technology, but use all the, the, the digital technology because you have not to buy uh, the, all this uh, software to do the correct, uh, the correct uh, treatment in occlusion. So let me present you Dranes. This is my last case, my last case, clinical case, uh, 56 years old, no smoking and no pathology. It's important to check all this point before any treatment. So it's like this, it's a German guy. So in Germany, they use this, um, this uh, overdenture and telescope uh, crown uh, to have a perfect adjustment of the matching of the prostate overdenture and the, and the gingiva. So if I look to the first uh, panoramic and CBCT, I can see the, the very, very high bone, so it's very nice, but in sick, it's the sickness is not so, uh, so obvious. So we have to be care during the planning and to, to have more, a lot of information about the sickness of the bone. Uh, according to the biological uh, principle I explained before uh, when we did the digital planning. So, uh, but first of all, it's important to, to, to do the est correct aesthetic setup. So for this, I do a, a digital smile analysis with my computer, I think you know this using a K0 or another, you check perfect the occlusion of the patient. This is what we learn on the university, but take time to do it with your dental technician. And then let's go for the aesthetic setup. And then you check with the patient. It's okay for phonation, etc. cetera, aesthetic, the patient validity. And then you can do the scanner with the aesthetic setup because the aesthetic setup like this is the final restoration. Okay, so you can do the scanner with it. So it's like if you, as you do the, the, the scanner with the final restoration. So take time to do correctly this aesthetic setup. Okay, you have maybe one or two appointments for this, but take time for this. So what we obtain on the planning, you can see you have the implant plan with the prosthetic, as you can see, the prosthetic issue for each implant. I, I uh, explain one time more that you have to do a perfect um, placement of implant in the bone for the, for the biological part. And for the prosthetic, you have to do the perfect placement of your implant um, for the aesthetic function and occlusion. This is an implant, so you have a different length, different diameters. And then you can check the density. You can see to D2, D4, this is not so good. And you can see here on 21, on 21, and uh, is not in the sickness of the bone in buccal is not so obvious. So I propose in these cases to do extraction, ex extraction of, so of the, the premolar, but in these cases on the uh, anterior area to do a graft during the surgery. I put a guide, I do a flap before, and I put my implant, and at the end, I put allogenic graft to, to, have more, to be more thicker on this area, on 21, and maybe 12 or so, and maybe 23, because it's important to obtain two millimeters in this area, okay? So look here on the 24, on 21, if you want to, to increase the thickness, think about allogenic graft. So it's what I did. I did in this case. So before the planning, so we have to check all the implant placement, implant axis, prothesis axis, and this is done by the digital the software. Put your implant, your prosthetic axis, perfectly in the center of each disc. And you know, in this in this planning, I keep the two molar as extract in my in my uh, treatment twenty four, but I keep the two molar to have a perfect stabilization on my, uh, my processes after the surgery. So the question is how to define the correct occlusion positioning of a processes done before the surgery in VOD, static and dynamic. Okay, by, by a user processing bone by 
by CAD CAM process from the aesthetic setup STL files, including the anchorage pin planning. That means that you start from the aesthetic setup. The aesthetic setup gives you the perfect VOD, the perfect occlusion in static and dynamic. Okay? So as you take your CBCT with this aesthetic setup, you know, you can match the aesthetic setup and the bone volume and obtain all the DICOM files of the, of the, um, of the um, CBCT in STL and you, you can match the uh, aesthetic setup uh, STL files together. Like this, this is the aesthetic setup and this is the bone volume. And this is the anchorage pin uh, plan for the guide. But what is important, you can use it for uh, to, to put your, your, prosthet your prosthetic the prosthesis after before bone to stabilize your prosthetic. Okay. On the posterior area, you stabilize with the tooth molar, and in front, you stabilize with the anchorage uh, anchorage pin down for the guide, and you use it for your prosthesis. What does that mean? That means that this is the two. Uh, pins for the guide anchorage. And then you can match the STL guide and the aesthetic setup guide. So in this way, you have this. And when you order, you order the guide with the anchorage pin, you have the same on your processes. You can see you do the processes with this. Silicon key for the guide, it's a protocol, normal. But before any, I do my, my um, punch, no fixing for the punch. I remove the guide. I do the full flap because at the end I have to do a uh, graft with allogenic bone. And my guide is perfectly stabilized with the two molars and the palatal area, all the palatal area. And for this, I use a silicon key. You can see the video perfectly defined. So I asked to the, to the patient to buy it on the silicon key. And then I can screw correctly my guide with a perfect stability, perfect placement. Okay. So then the surgical protocol, you know this now, all the drilling steps, begin the first one slowly, correctly, uh, take time to do this, to have to, to rinse between each tapes, to clean all the drill, to remove all the base cells and the uh, osteocyte and to go after each drill. Then it's for implant placement with the indexation. You can see this, all the indexation system. And then, excuse me. Uh, this wrong. It's in French. So excuse me. Okay, I have to remove it. So this is the prosthetic abutment. And then you can see when I place my prosthesis to be sure of the positioning of my prosthesis. First of all, on the two molars, you have a perfect um, perfect adjustment of this. And in front of you can use the same all you do with the screw for the guide placement. So. I use the same screw. I am perfectly in occlusion. I use this screw on the on the 20, on 22, and then it's on the other side also. And then all is fixed. I have time to put my resin to bond it correctly. Before this, my uh, dental technician cut correctly the height of each um, uh, prosthetic abutment, and then I can bond it correctly. You know the two, the, the uh, stabilization in molar and the screw, and uh, by this way, I am sure my occlusion is okay. After you have to manage perfectly the, the profile of each uh, implant location. This is a D-Day. You know I do the suture because I put the boon graft here on the vestibular zone. This is seven day, and then this is after three months. So this is uh, the X-ray, and uh, sadly, I I have to do the definitive 
prosthesis, but with the uh, corona COVID, I have to stop and uh, all the treatment now. And I think uh, in the one month I, I I do it. So maybe I can show you the definitive uh, restoration in one month because I can do it uh, uh, for the for the COVID uh, pandemic. Okay. So what is the take home message about my presentation? So I just want to, to, to focus on one point. When you think digital, don't think show off. Please think about biology, aesthetic, and function. The digital is here to promote it, to help us for this, to have more precision, predictability, adaptation, security, and stability. Thank you very much. Thank you for the excellent session. Thank you very much, doctor, for the excellent session. It was lovely. Thank you. Really had a good time. Participants, if you also like the session, I want you to write, yes, excellent session. Yes, wonderful session. I, I want you to write, yes, excellent session. Yes, wonderful session. Doctor, could you please stop your screen share for a moment? Yeah. Friends, let's take a short break. Thank you very much, Dr. Isha. Thank you, Dr. Somi. Thank you, Dr. Firdos. We too enjoyed the session. Thank you very much. Friends, as we're taking a short break. I stop to, I stop to, I stop to share my screen. Oh, yes, sir. Please stop your screen share. Yeah, it's okay like this. Thank you. Okay. Friends, please make sure that you're noting down all your questions. We would be soon getting into the live question and answer session. Before that, very quickly, I would like to let you know about dentistchannel.online. Please post your questions, friends. Please post your questions. Very soon, we'd be getting into the live question and answer session. Friends, we dentistchannel.online, we are a dental media company. Uh, today is the 21st dental live webinar and we are very thankful to Dr. Lauren and to all the others who've come on our platform and who've shared their valuable knowledge and their excellent skills and presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Lauren, and to all the others who've always made possible that there should be a continuous learning experience. Friends, if you have not subscribed to dentistchannel.online, I request you to kindly subscribe please subscribe our YouTube channel. If you have already subscribed, please comment, yes, subscribe. We would, be, we would be very happy if you've subscribed to our channel so that you are posted with the latest digital technological advancements from the world of dentistry, as well as you stay updated on the upcoming webinars. Thank you very much. If you've not subscribed, please do subscribe. You can go on to our page you can read various blogs and aspects on dentistry we have blogs on healthcare we have blogs on oral hygiene please do read our blogs on our dental platform that is www.dentistchannel.online like i said please follow us please do subscribe please do share and please like our page a certificate of participation would be only given to you if you send your name and the name of the webinar on the below mentioned WhatsApp number. If you mention your name and the name of the webinar on your below mentioned WhatsApp number, a certificate would be given to you. A participation certificate would be given to you. This is only valid for the next five minutes. If you want a certificate of participation for this webinar, please send your name and the name of the webinar on the below mentioned WhatsApp number. This is about the next webinar. Please do register for the next webinar. The next webinar would be taking place on Sunday, the 10th May at 11 a.m. Indian Standard Time. Please do register for the upcoming webinar. You can see the registration link in the chat box. Once again, if you wish to have a certificate of participation, please send your name and the name of the webinar. This is only valid for the next five minutes. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Lauren. And now we start with the live question and answer session. Starting with the first question, 
how to overcome biologically weak spot of conventional dental implant excuse me what i will repeat the question sir yeah how to overcome biologically weak spot of conventional dental implant can you write it please so you can find the same question in the question question and answer session box the q and a yeah. box there yeah yeah where is the question the the question and answer session box the first question on top how to overcome biological weak spot of conventional dental implant can you write please on the on the on the on the box here on the on the right all right sure please. sir sure please sure sir i have already written were you able to see the question yeah what the hell was called wait oof in the meanwhile maybe we can move to the next question sir yeah please all right thank you very much moving to the next question what is the biological outcome of implant supported restorations in treatment of par partial edentulism let me let me say, ask as the first one how was the overcome uh, overcome please uh, of conventional implant uh, it mean about the common the, um, the digital technology is not here to to um, to 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 manage the the general biological uh, week of the patient you know the 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 digital in dentistry is just here to optimize the treatment so it can give you different information about the biology of the bone the processes to perform, to to have a, a perfect uh, um, to to optimize the result but i explained before you have to check different points before any implantation i mean uh, this is um, the the you know the ldl cholesterol all all these points pathology of the patient diabetes is made this, 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 you can do the, uh, check with the um, with the uh, with the uh, digital technology you can check with your patient on the with the conventional uh, questionnaire is what we want to know or, or not I hope the question was answered so moving on to the next question which is the best immediate functional loading implant what is the best uh, what approach system implantology what is the best implant which is the best immediate functional loading implant that is the question yes but what is the best uh, immediate loading function yes sir yeah. i don't know it, it, it depends because you know um uh, for now it's also um a, a wish of the patient the patient ask for immediate loading for sure if you want to put uh, implant with delay be careful of the hoverdenture because if you use hoverdenture with uh, with a lot of delay maybe the hoverdenture could uh, create a failure for your implant so now the immediate loading is perfectly um, defined we can see on the literature that about the the, the rates uh, success rates is uh, near close to the with delay uh, so you can do it uh, you can do it without any problem but you can do it in the respect of the rules of the biological principles what i explained and for this we have to check to have a perfect initial implant stability you have to check it you have to check the the biology of the patient and uh, you have to check the the perfect prosthetic axis you have to check these different points okay but for now i can sh show you different uh, scientific cent uh, articles that proving that the, the immediate loading are the same success rate than the delay um, so for sure for me uh, immediate loading uh, is a, is a good way for to 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 to, to uh, give a response a aesthetic response for the patient also thank you very much sir moving on to the next question 
is it very safe to use guided surgery in severe atrophic total edentulous maxilla? So you know that uh, the, um, the use of guided surgery uh, uh, impose, imposes a very important uh, learning curve, you know? Uh, I use uh, the guided surgery since uh, 20 years. I am at the beginning with Philippe Tardieu and uh, Willink and of this guy to develop all the guided system. Okay, but at the at the end we have a um, skill about the the, the the guided system. So maybe you can you you I, I use it for complex cases with a big resolution etc. But be careful if you are a young user. Uh, maybe you have no, not uh, enough skill to use it, but it's possible for sure. I, you, normally in my practice, I put the uh, pterygoidian implant with a guide, you know? So it's very, you put, it's possible to use for zygomatic implant, pterygoid implant, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you must have a, a, a very important uh, learning curve between, before doing it. Be careful about this. Thank you very much. So moving on to the next question, which graft is better, Zeno or Allo for immediate extraction implant? Alors for me, you know, it doesn't matter if immediate loading or not immediate loading. I think the better is uh, the mix between autogenous and allograft. I don't like the Zenograft. And also I use, um, you know, the PRF. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question, what will be the accuracy of using implant guide? I explained to you, I think is a, the average is at around 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 millimeters. But if, if you respect very, very uh, important the protocol, because the accuracy doesn't de don't depend uh, on, on the guide, it depends also on the practice, you know, is it, a is dentist um, depend, you know? So when you do the, the guided surgery, you have to check all the points, perfect placement, perfect drilling step, et cetera, et cetera. In this way, when all is perfectly defined and the protocol is perfectly used, for sure, you have around 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 millimeters. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. What is the failure rate of immediate loading implants? The failure rates. Uh, I told you it's the same than uh, than uh, immediate loading. No, that's uh, about uh, with delay. Maybe it's around uh, the success is around ninety eight percent. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Some mentors say blanching of mucosa after tightening the prosthesis is a good sign. Do you agree? No. I think I, I, I have another lecture about this with different scientific uh, uh, scientific uh, articles uh, about this. And uh, I think you have the source between uh, no compression about the emergence profile, uh, compression without contact, with, no, and with contact and compression. I think the best way is to have no contact and no compression. Thank you, sir. Two, mm -hmm. two more questions. Uh, can immediate implants be placed in any and every cases? No, depend on the on the quality of your bone. Okay, the the immediate loading impose different principles. Uh, I can explain to you, but the the most important point is to obtain a perfect initial implant stability, and for this you have to check your bone, you have to check your implant design. You have to check the 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 area, the location, implant location. You know, uh, if you use um, implant without, uh, I don't know, SLA, without uh, very aggressive aggressive uh, thread or not, I don't know what's about the implant design. If you over drill on a D4 boon, you can't obtain initial implant stability. The most important point is the initial implant stability. If you are sure that your implant is perfectly uh, stable, okay? And for this, you have some study done by uh, the current team about the value of ice Q uh, and the incision torque. If your incision torque is more than 45, 
okay? And the session to torque is more than uh, 70. Maybe you can, it's possible, but if you, your implant move or you have not enough in the session torque or ISQ, you can do it. So you can, you have to do the, um, you have to do uh, with a delay concept. Thank you very much, sir. Last question from the live question and answer session. So it is always said that the implant abutment connection in conventional implants is excellent, but it is not same in immediate loading implants. Do you agree to this? You think that the, the connection, abutment connection is not good in, in uh, is not very perfect in uh, immediate loading, is the question? That's the question, sir, yes. No, but it's the reason why I use the, the um, is the reason why I use the digital uh, technology is to obtain a perfect connection. In all the case I did, my connection is perfect. I use the, um, the, the prosthetic connection is done by CADCAM. So we, we can have any errors with this. So uh, I don't know the guy asked the question, but uh, if you use the, the digital process, and you don't the prosthesis before the surgery, okay? Uh, the connection is done by the CAT-CAM concept. And in the cat cam concept, the, the, the connection is manufactured with a screw in titanium with a perfect emergence profile. So I think this minimizes a lot of errors and I have not errors about this in my practice. Thank you very much, sir. With this, we come to an end of the live question and answer session. Thank you very much once again for the wonderful presentation, for your valuable time and for the excellent cases. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much for all the participants. Thank you all. Have Thank a good time in India and stay safe, all my friend in India. Thank you very much, sir. Likewise, please do say, stay safe and please make sure that you subscribe to Dentist Channel for all the live webinars and for the upcoming webinars. Thank you, everyone. May you all have a good day.